when you're rehabilitating wild animals, like opossums, raccoons, and even skunks, nothing could possibly go wrong. Until it does. What did you do? I'll tell you what I did. I broke my first rule. I went to the animal instead of having the animal come to me. And I paid for it. The skunk sprayed me. Not just a regular spray. I got it in my hair, on my face, and in my mouth. I think we can figure something out. Okay, well I brought the champagne. So oh, we're gonna fix it. You can stay right there for a moment. You may have heard when your dog gets sprayed by a skunk to give him a bath in tomato sauce. And all that might work, we didn't have time for multiple applications. And also, this is not my real hair color, so I wasn't going to put tomato sauce in my bleached hair. So I went back to what my Aunt Gail uses on her Pomeranians, which is probably the same texture as my hair, and that's cheap champagne, like super cheap. And that's how we got here today. Oh, man. Take off your cap. <coughs> oh, Tina. That's bad. <laughs> Not that bad. It was that bad. And whatever you're thinking, it was worse. This is a waste of champagne. It's the best I could do. Are you sure this is gonna work? Ooh. Pretty sure. It smells, and I'm scared this is gonna pop. <laughs> All things considered, I'd do it again. Your hair still smells. I think this is a two bottle job. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know you're my favorite, right? Yes. He got me, but it was worth it. It's just like opossums, skunks have a job to do. They eat all kinds of creepy crawlies and nasties like snakes, cockroaches, scorpions, wasps, rats, and mice. So I had to do everything I could to try and save him. That smells so much better. So much better. I can finally breathe again. Do you feel better? Yes. I hope so. This is Cyprian. He is a three month old striped skunk. He was found in a neighborhood, actually in someone's front yard. Um, he was not moving when he was found, but he quickly had a burst of adrenaline just after I showed up. Cyprian, however, is not in the best of health. We have had a little bit of a scare since his joining the rehab. And although he is quite comfortable right now, he's had nothing but bad luck since he was found. Cyprian is a wild animal. He's not a pet. And so if he doesn't recover like a wild animal should, it, we can't base the decision to just go ahead and keep him because he wouldn't live out his life in the wild. In some rehabilitation centers, there are ambassador animal levels that these folks can go to, but Cyprian, however, we're going to monitor his health based on what this rehab can have. If it does come out that he needs longer-term care and he will have a quality of life, he may be placed in a long-term um, ba basically lifelong care. Wild animals are not pets. They have a special diet, they have other needs, and they have other uh, immunization requirements. Some animals, like skunks, cannot be immunized because it could actually activate things that you would normally immunize against. These animals are also very wild. They're born wild and they have wild instincts. So where you can domesticate a cat, it's not necessarily gonna be true for things like skunks, raccoons, and opossums. If you should come across a skunk, just leave it be. More than likely, it's only looking for food or getting back to its little family. And if you should agitate a skunk, it's going to give you plenty of warnings. It's not just gonna spray you because you walked it behind it. First thing they're gonna do is stump their front feet. That is your warning shot number one. You might get a couple of those depending on how um, generous they're feeling. But the next one is they're gonna show you the booty. And that is not that is not their trigger pulling finger, right? They're just showing you a little booty, right? 
Next is you're getting full on spray. So if you've had to stop and you've got a booty flash, you are the one that needs to go away. Just let the skunk be. Go back inside, get your dog, and just let them walk off. Again, their cleanup crew, you're in the way. Cyprian can spray. And although he's a little bitty dude, he's already shown that he has the ability to spray since he got me straight in the face. That's not something you should really worry too much about because one, you shouldn't be just walking up to skunks and trying to pick them up. That's just my job, maybe not yours. But if you should get sprayed, it's not the end of the world. It's not acid. It will wash off, not quickly, but there are ways to get it out. Like champagne in your shampoo works wonders. If you're braver than I am, you can use blue Listerine, but in any case, it comes out. That's the worst that they can do to you. They do like dry cat food and dry dog food, so if you like to feed at night or you like to feed feral cats, you are inviting them to a little feast on your back porch. That is perfectly fine. Like I said, they're going to clean up the environment and they're gonna move on about their, their way. So if you don't want them on your porch, maybe put that up. Those feral cats can eat in the morning. They'll be just fine. A skunk's lifespan is, it varies quite differently than that of other animals or other small mammals. In captivity, they can live quite a long time, maybe up to 15 years. But in the real world, the wild where they belong, they've got a lifespan of maybe two to three years. It's not a health issue necessarily, but in the wild, they are prey. There are humans, um, other dogs and things like that that can get to them. And then sometimes it is going to be a health issue like lack of nutrition, bad environment, they're in a, an urban area where they can't get to the wholesome foods that they need to grow and develop properly. Oh, this is for you, Tina. Ugh. Oh, she'll forgive me. We had to make an emergency visit to the vet. Cyprian wasn't doing so well. In fact, he wasn't walking and he still isn't really walking on the pads of his feet. He walks more on what we would think of as ankles, but those are the hawks. The pads of his feet are really like a child that's been in a pool all day. Very shriveled, very peely, very scaly. For him, very painful. So with his inability to walk, I was pretty worried that there were maybe fractures or other broken bones. So we wanted to get them x-rayed as quickly as possible. We also had some other concerns that I wanted to go over with the vet. So emergency trip one. And although Cyprian was a trooper, we had a lot of exploratory exams to go through. Step one, however, little dude had to wear a muzzle. The tiniest muzzle in the veterinary office was used on this little sucker. He was a complete trooper. The next big adventure for little Sip was x-ray. So he had some immobility in his hindquarters um, but he also appeared to have maybe a curvature or some sort of fracture in his spine. So we went ahead and did three sets of imaging and then immediately went to review those with the vet. Step two, skin scrapings. His skin is very angry. In fact, when I first found him, he was more of a pink and white striped skunk because of so much blood coming through to the surface. His, his fur was pretty stained. He has been medicated for his angry skin and that may have resulted in the findings. We, we found no mites as well as no fractures, but he's still very, very sick. So at the end of that visit, we decided we were going to put him on another medication, which we picked up immediately after, and that he actually started today. So although he is showing improvement, he is really only at about a 50-50 chance of survival. We are gonna monitor very heavily his quality of life or his future life and make decisions based on both his ability to recover, his progress, and then what his end result quality of life would look like. One of the issues with trying to get an animal like this to the vet is they are a vector species, it means they're born carrying rabies. They're not active, there's no reason to be afraid of them, but they are a vector species, which means that most veterinary offices cannot see them. So that's always a concern when you bring in an animal like this to a rehab is how will you provide medical attention? There aren't a lot of medical journals, essays, or any kind of documents about skunks out there as it is. And so it's very risky one to go into an office. And even if you do, there's not a lot of information you can you know, receive. As a rehabber, our primary goal and our job is to get these animals rehabilitated and returned to the wild. 
So a lot of the decisions that we make while rehabbing are based and determined by whether or not that animal can survive on its own once it's of age, size, or weight. So at this point, Cyprian needs additional care and we have started subcutaneous uh, medications and he does have medicated baths that he will have to continue to take. This is going to help with his overall recovery, but it's also going to help us determine is whether or not he's going to be a candidate to continue um, rehabilitation. Even if he's responding, if he's not responding to a certain degree, it is something that is considered um, non-viable. So we would have to make a decision there that isn't a friendly or super fun one to make, but it is part of this job. In order for Cyprian to heal, we do have to go through these baths. He is going to look much worse before he looks any better. So that means getting up, bathing yourself, bathing a skunk, cleaning poop to clean up more poop, maybe giving him meds and cleaning up his poop. There's a lot of poop. And then bathing yourself again, just to start it over the next day. In between all of that, you're also feeding, cleaning, laundry, hoping for the best when it comes to this guy's rear end and then anything that the possums have decided to destroy overnight, which is usually every pee pad in the pen. So one of our biggest fears when it comes to skunk is the spray. And I can tell you firsthand that that is a very accurate fear to possess, okay? So when I tried to pick up Cyprian the first time, he decided that it was my first time to be sprayed and it was his first time to spray a human, so we were gonna make this a big production. So he got me straight in the face. Um, luckily I wore glasses or I would be visually impaired at this point, but I can tell you that the, the flavor is a little different than expected. Um, for about the first 20 minutes, it, it resembles juicy fruit gum, not sponsored. Um, but for the next 24 straight hours, it tastes like pure garlic extract. I do not recommend. It also got in my hair and all over my clothes that I could handle. Um, it wasn't stinging or painful in any way. It was just a very long afternoon at this point. I had to go to the vet to get him some meds and there was maybe a little concern upon entry there. I did have to go to the office uh, the next day so that had to be rescheduled because that was obviously out of the question. And when you're trying to book a hair appointment, when you smell like maybe something was hit by a car, it's going to only be after hours that they will see you. I often get asked, why bother? Opossums and skunks and raccoons, they all play a role in our environment. And in a neighborhood, urban and suburban neighborhoods, we rely on these animals to carry their weight. They're eating things in our world that would otherwise overrun and overpopulate our homes rodents and, and snakes and other bugs and things that carry diseases. So we rely heavily on them. This isn't just a fun project or something cute to do on the weekends. We're trying to restore the ecosystem within our own neighborhoods. If you have a love for animals and you have some time on your hands, we are always looking for help with erecting pens, cleaning poop, giving baths, cleaning poop, and feeding. There are a never-ending list of errands and chores to do when you're rehabilitating animals. The goal is to make sure that the community is aware of what to do as much as the rehabbers, so come give us a call. Cyprian symptoms were showing more neurological signs. He was becoming more and more lethargic and losing mobility. Each day, it was getting a little worse. He stopped walking or even trying to walk or stand. He still had an appetite and was very thirsty, but was having difficulty getting to his food and sitting up to eat. Watching Cyprian struggle through these new symptoms and not having a clear diagnosis has been one of the hardest things I've had to do as a rehabber. I'd happily get sprayed again 10 more times than to watch him continue to suffer and the treatments fail to work. 
There's just obviously something we couldn't see or even test for. His coordination was practically lost overnight. He had the will to live, but we just didn't have an answer for how to help him. So it's touch and go right now. We'll see what it looks like in the morning, but it is definitely not looking good. So in the end, Cyprian didn't make it. We had to try, and I'm going to try with every animal, with every ounce of energy I've got. But it turns out that with Cyprian, he ingested rodenticide. Either he ate it directly, or he ate something that was being poisoned, like a mouse or a snake or something. And so even though you're trying to protect your home and you're only going after one or two particular targets, using poison of any kind is dangerous to the environment all around. Because whatever eats that poison is then eaten later, whether it's while it's still alive or after it's dead because there are so many trash cats that eat the carcasses. So the poison, it never goes away. Before you try to use poison, there are other ways to get the nasties and creepy crawlies or maybe even the wildlife out of your home. Please go with that option because in the end, we still lose the animal after we've tried everything we have. My heart is in a million pieces. At this point, this week alone, we've taken in another teeny baby skunk, a cottontail, a raccoon baby, and a random duck. I'm not even supposed to take in ducks, but here we are. While Petrie's place isn't licensed to take waterfowl, there is a good Samaritan provision, buying Tina a little time to find our duckling a permanent home. Much smaller than Cyprian, our latest skunk kit lost its mama, which requires syringe feeding and medical care for his injuries. A very young cottontail kit was also brought in. While your pet bunny might have a friendly disposition, cottontail rabbits always choose violence. Also bottle fed is a single orphaned raccoon. A pest control professional attempted to reunite this orphan with its mother, but after four days, the mother had already moved on. While adult raccoons are nocturnal, their kits require much more daytime attention. It's like having a toddler. God, you're making a mess. Raccoon kits like Chicken Elizabeth Nugget here are a real handful. Even when there's bad news in the sanctuary, there's no time to dwell as the needs of the syringe and bottle babies are too great to take any time off to grieve. So Petrie's Place's mission continues to take in more injured and orphaned animals and return them healthy to the wild. Raccoons are social animals, and when a single orphan like Chicken comes into the sanctuary, she has to get all of her socializing and playtime from Tina, the sanctuary volunteers, and sometimes the camera crew. While raccoons don't grow as quickly as opossums, little chicken here will be running the place before long. If she doesn't already.
Hello? Yeah, this is Petrie's place. Yeah, we can, we can. I'm sorry, there's how many? So what I did was I went back to what my Aunt Gail uses on her Pomeranians, since my hair is probably the same texture, and <laughs> <laughs> the ghost is back. Action.